Well, Teddy, Lou, and Chris here at Legendary Motor Car have been hard at work getting the drivetrain into this chassis for the 70 GTO Judge. Well, when you're detailing a motor, it comes back from the engine builder. First thing we would do is degrease it. Now, the factory would have probably used a spray bomb, which isn't very pretty to look at. What we're doing here, because this is a show car, is Glazerit's come up with a proper Pontiac color. We're spraying it out of a gun. Goes in the booth, gets done properly. Now, the original WS code, which this car is here with a stick, a Ram Air 3. You can see the original numbers here in the block. They're very faint, but they are here. Those would match the VIN number. As far as detail items, there's lots of little things. Hardware, for example. These studs were used only on air cars, but all Ram Air 3, 4 cars, it's correct to have them here because they were the only ones used, period. Now, as far as the differences between a Ram Air 3 and a Ram Air 4, the air breather looks very similar, but you have a preheater tube that comes down from the exhaust manifold up into here. On a Ram Air 4 car, it's on both sides here. Ram Air 4, again, has this piece here. It's hand-formed. This one's metal stamped. Now, as far as the brackets go, you remember how we dipped them? Those are all correct. The overspray on the bell housing, that would be correct. Keep in mind, they were sprayed originally together as one unit. Now let's go to the rear end, and we'll show you some detailed sections on the rear end. Well, this car here comes with a 10-bolt. It's a Ram Air 3 car. It wasn't until late in 1970 that the 455 came out that the 12-bolt was mandatory. Well, this here is a bolt-in style axle as opposed to a C-clip, more like a Ford rear end. Now, as far as gear ratios went, you could get a 331, a 355, a 390, or a 433, depending what transmission option you had. Now, as far as detailing one of these, they all started out with natural axle tubes, obviously the caster end, the natural backing plate. Now what happened was it was totally installed like this and you can see all the brake lines have been detailed, all the paper tags that would have left the factory are on this car for the springs, the rear axle itself and uh, all the brake lines. Now a lot of these would have rotted away very quickly. A lot of them are just paper tags. So one winter once out in the rain, they'd be gone. Now, after the body is lowered down on this, there's a blackout procedure that happens back here, and literally they just kind of painted all over this to try and make it black so it wouldn't look quite as shiny underneath. Now, how about the transmission? That's another story. Now, this car came with the DJ training, and the tag tells us that, and what that means is it was a wide ratio, which means the rear end gear ratio was a 355. Now, the difference between an M20 and an M21 is the close and wide ratio, and what that just means is first gear actually on a wide ratio is a better gear to get out of the hole. On a close ratio, all the gears are stacked a little closer. So if you go from first to second, the RPM drop is consistent as from second to third, which is consistent as from third to fourth, which is a great road racing transmission, but out of the hole, it isn't quite as good. And that's why an M21 or an M22 transmission, they opted for a higher rear end gear ratio. Now, the wide ratio, great street transmission. Out of the hole, lots of grunt. Second gear, lots of grunt. Third gear, lots. And then you've got a big difference because it goes from a 1.48 ratio down to a one to one when it's in fourth gear. With a close ratio box, you go from a 1.28 ratio to one, so you get less of a big gap in between third and fourth gear. Now the difference between, everybody asks, what is a rock crusher? Well, it's basically the internals. It's a close ratio box, very similar to an M21. Now the difference is on the pitch of the gear. You can see here that a rock crusher gear has less of a pitch than an M21 gear. What that does is reduces some of the load on the thrust washer through the counter gear. And what happens is you can feel it or hear it clunking back and forth. Now on a Trans Am race car, they're almost straight cut gears or are straight cut gears and you hear that beautiful growl. That's why they call them a rock crusher. It's got that noise that this one here doesn't produce. Both are close ratio boxes, both are similar boxes. This one's a little tougher, better road racing transmission box. Well, that's pretty much the detail items. The other item you want to check on your training if you're doing a concourse restoration is you want to have the numbers, which this one does, original transmission, which matches the serial number to this car. As far as detailing goes, it's an aluminum piece. We put it in with some walnut shells, blast it, comes up mint, looks like brand new. Don't sandblast one of these, it'll be a little bit too coarse. That's pretty much all of the detail work as far as drivetrain goes on the 70 Judge.